welcome to Viking Views. I'm Katherine Flores. Missouri Valley hosted the Baker Wildcats in an NAIA top 10 matchup in a game that featured a lot of defense. The two teams combined for only 457 total yards. Baker scored the only points of the first half on a short run by Dylan Baxter. Valley's Danny Reyes intercepted a pass in Wildcat territory, but fumbled during the return. Baker recovered the fumble and led at the break 7-0. The Vikings' Lucas Guilfoyle kicked a 35-yard field goal with less than 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter to put Valley on the board. The defense held Baker to a three and out and Danny Reyes blocked the punt. Zach Thomas recovered for Valley at the Baker 28 and the Vikings capitalized when running back Malachi Daniels punched in a short run for a touchdown, giving the Vikings a 10-7 lead. But Baker kicker Clarence Clark hit a 59-yard field goal to tie the game at 10. The kick is the second longest field goal in conference history, and it sent the game into overtime. The Vikings got the ball first, but quarterback Bruce Reyes threw an interception. Baker was forced to attempt a 52-yard field goal, and Clark sent the ball sailing through the uprights, giving Baker a 13-10 win over Missouri Valley. The loss puts the Vikings at 5-2 and 5-1 in the Heart of America Conference. They are on the road to take on Peru State in Nebraska. The men's soccer team took a loss in a marquee game. Viking Views, Tyrone Ritter has more. Conference rivals Missouri Valley and Baker played a heated match Tuesday, October 23rd at Greg Mitchell Field. Missouri Valley, the number six ranked team in the NAIA, scored first on sophomore midfielder Ryo Bennett's first goal of the season. Then with barely a minute left in the match, number 16 Baker was awarded a penalty kick that they converted into the game tying goal. In double overtime, the Wildcats scored again to beat the Vikings 2-1. The loss gives the Vikings an overall record of 10-3-3 and a 2-1-2 record in conference play. This has been Tyron Ritter reporting for Viking Views. Missouri Valley College women's soccer team fell short against Baker University 1-0 on their senior night game. Baker scored its only goal, a corner kick, just two minutes into the game. Missouri Valley was unable to get much going offensively through the game. Baker's goalie had five saves to shut out the Vikings offense. Vikings goalie Irene Sanchez said elements played a factor. The wind was really strong and the team wasn't focused in that moment, but it's a goal, it's soccer, things can happen and we don't have to worry because it's just a game. Our seniors are a great group of girls. They helped start the program uh, when we, when I took over uh, three or uh, six years ago, but that was the first group that I recruit, really recruited and they've stayed for four years and they really helped bring the program up and take us to where we are today. So I can't say enough of good things about that group of girls. The Vikings record is 3-2-1 in the Heart of America Conference play and their overall record is 10-4-3. They will play their last season game against Culver Stockton October 26th at 1 p.m. before playoffs begin. After a rough season last year, the basketball program plans on changing things around this year. The Missouri Valley men's basketball team opens its season this weekend at home against Hannibal LaGrange. Head coach Chad Lance and the team are hoping to replace last year's leading scorer Jordan Epps by being fundamentally sound and taking advantage of every opportunity. With seven upperclassmen on this year's roster, leadership will play a big role in the determining the success of the 2013 season. The game is set to tip off at 4 p.m. With the majority of the enrollment being made up of student athletes, it could be easy to forget about what matters most, which is your grades. Thankfully, the Learning Center is here to help. Viking Views, Philip Fowler has a story. The Learning Center is making a positive impact on students all across campus. Theory Director Carol Smith said that tutoring is a major piece of what they do, but it's not the only service the facility provides. One of the significant things that we do is um, test proctoring. Uh, we help students who say, for instance, have to be gone on a, um, some sort of activity or event, a game, and they have to miss a test in a course. They, then what we do is provide a place that they can take that test. Along with proctoring makeup tests, the Learning Center has become the most popular location for coaches to assign study tables for their athletes. Well, I know that football, um, I know that um, we've had wrestlers up here, and uh, we are also now, the, uh, some of the girls' teams are coming up after hours. I just added golf from two, uh, I'm sorry, for two hours from four to six in the, even, in the afternoons, and they are just now starting to use the facility. So it's really pretty much booked between Sunday evening through Thursday evening. 
Every Tuesday and Thursday evening, the football program meets on the top floor of Beatty for its weekly study tables. Assistant coach Denny Holland has been holding study tables inside the Learning Center for the past three to four years. He said the team started using the Learning Center because of the positive atmosphere the place gives off. We started off using just normal classrooms and the kids really weren't in a comfortable situation sitting in this, those small desks. It wasn't a real inviting atmosphere. The Learning Center is really nicely done. It's got comfy chairs. It's got a, just kind of a soothing atmosphere. It's kind of a homey feeling for them. Uh, which is kind of nice, allows the kids to relax and really do some good studying. Even though study tables is intended for those new guys who may have a problem with using their time wisely, some of the returning players utilize the period to help with their grades as well. It's helped me a lot because if I was at home, I wouldn't be doing any homework, probably be playing Xbox. But coming in here kind of forces me to focus in, get my work done, you know, help me prepare for the next day of class. Along with tutoring, there's a range of benefits that come with the Learning Center that goes beyond just getting help for homework. And if you haven't been there, Director Carol Smith said to come up and see what she calls the most beautiful room on campus. This is Phil Fowler reporting with Viking Views. The Learning Center is open Monday through Thursday from 7.30 to 4 and closes at 3.30 on Fridays. A Missouri Valley tradition that's held every year could not skip a year. Valley students and faculty joined the bonfire that was held on Friday behind Burns Gymnasium. Weather canceled the homecoming bonfire. Students and faculty gathered at the bonfire with their friends and enjoyed free hot chocolate and cookies. Fall has arrived and along with it has flu shots. Every fall semester, the nurse office offers flu shots to students, staff, and faculty. No appointment is needed. All you have to do is walk in and fill out paperwork. The shot is available Monday through Friday during nurse hours while supplies last. The cost of the shot is only $15. There is a reward of a lollipop for those brave enough to get the shot. If you are curious about the shot, stop by the nurse office and read the signs or talk to the nurse for more information. A Valley professor has details about an organism located in Missouri. Janelle Garcia has more inside the story. Assistant Professor of Biology Waylon Heiler shared his knowledge to Valley students and faculty about the Ozark Hellbender organism at Mural Library. I have kind of a unique perspective on a pretty extraordinary organism called the Ozark Hellbender. I learned that they're an endangered species um, and they're only native to the Ozark River. Professor Waylon used a projector of slides to give the crowd visual information about how important conservation is for the hellbenders. I've always been an avid conservationist and always loved nature. I'm a Boy Scout, Eagle Scout, so I love everything to do with nature, but we go on a lot of float trips and things, so I never really understood why like it did affect them. Now I know it affects them like running over them with canoes and polluting water with alcohol and cans, and so now I know like when we go to recycle and throw stuff away to not in the river. Valley students took notes of information about the organism. I am Janelle Garcia, reporting for Viking Views. Ducks, beards, and rubber band guns. Duck Dynasty took over Mural Library. Test your luck and shoot a duck. The Huey Dewey Decimal Duck Hunt tested students' knowledge on the conservation exhibit, the displays, and Professor Heiler's presentation. Jay Steinkler wanted the event to be everything it was quacked up to be. The Huey Dewey Decimal Duck Hunt, I would start out just as the Merle Library duck hunt, but we kind of wanted a little bit a cuter name for it. So even though in this library um, our cataloging system is the Library of Congress system, uh, a lot of people know the, the Dewey Decimal System. That's more popular in public libraries and some school, other school libraries. So, and then if most people remember um, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, they were ducks um, in cartoons, so we thought it would be cute for a Huey, Dewey, Decimal Duck Hunt. We thought that was just a cute little name for it. Yeah, since we're doing the beard booth co uh, competition right now, we thought it would be really cute to put the beard on the ducks and, um, and, and just kind of make it a little, more, a little more like the Duck Dynasty people. Uh, we, uh, we actually got questions from the actual exhibit that we have here and from, uh, from the displays that we have and a little bit from um, Waylon Heiler's presentation he had that night too. So I mean, they had to kind of answer them all and they had to answer a question. Once they answered that question correctly, they could shoot a duck with the rubber band gun. It wasn't a real gun, it was a rubber band gun. And uh, if they knocked the duck off the, the ledge, um, they got a point. So we went, kept going until we got a winner. 
The grand prize was the, um, uh, on our Serene Lady statue, we have a Uncle Cy costume. That was the grand prize. Then the, the, the second prize was we had a, 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 a Duck Dynasty, um, uh, like, cozy cup, yeah, like for, for your soda cans and stuff. That was along with um, cups filled with candy. There will be another presentation in the library on October 29th given by Dr. Larry Godsey about his deployment in Afghanistan and how he helped with their agricultural system. For more information on presentations and events taking place in the library, contact Jay Steinkohler at steinkohlerj at mobile.edu. The Dancing with Valley competition presented by the Missouri Valley College Repertory Dance Ensemble completed the first round of action this past week. The competition gave NBC staff and local community employees a chance to compete to be named Valley's Favorite Dancer. Each competitor performed with their own individual NBC Fine Arts student dancer. Viking Views, Brent Callai has the story. The event began with a dance introduction put on by every one of the performers who were in the show. Shortly after the warm-up, the real competition was set to begin. The six dancers and their partners were each given one dance to prove that they belonged to move on to the final round. The winners were determined by the vote of the crowd. When the final votes were tallied, the three finalists chosen included Saline County Circuit Court Judge Hugh Harvey, Shapes Dance and Acro Studio employee Kara Hawk, and MBC's own Emily Finnewald. With the little dance experience Emily Finnewald had, her partner Diamond Ross taught her how to have fun and relax on stage. Diamond was very um, adamant on working on my facials and not looking bored, but I was concentrating very hard, and so when it came time for the dance, I just was like, you know what, be as cheesy as you can and sell it, and so I think that's what I did. Although Leah Rudd has been dancing for 10 years, Dancing with Valley also proved to be a unique experience for her. I wanted to do it for the experience, pretty much, just because it's something I've never done before, and I thought it would be interesting to challenge myself and teach somebody who has never danced before see how it turns out, see how my choreography looks on other people. Dancing with Valley is one of many events that gives people the chance to showcase talents maybe they never knew they had. This is Brent Callaway reporting for Viking Views. The final round of the Dancing with Valley competition takes place Monday, November 4th in the Eccleston Maybe Theater. Next time, each competitor will be judged on their combined performance in two separate dances. One of the MVC values, diversity, means not only diversity of the people, but also means diversity of the programs students attend at Missouri Valley College and join and learn in the variety of programs. There are many creative activities on this campus that people may not know about. Viking Views, Aki Nagasaka reports on one student who has a strong passion for the improv stage and found a spot where she belongs. Sports are not only the reason for students to choose the college to get an education, Heather Hill is a transfer student from State Fair Community College in Sedalia. She came to Missouri Valley College to join the improv troupe, the Floatliners, and take her next step in the theater department. Because last year, Wade Hughes came over and taught our school, and so he um, really tried hard to recruit me over here, and improv is a passion of mine, and you guys have a really strong improv, so I was like, yeah, I'll come over, I'll audition for your improv. And the members of this year's Floatliners, including Heather, have their performance twice a month in the Morris Experimental Theater. They are increasing collection of their comedic arsenal through each show as their experience. It has a lot of really fun people, wakes me up. The more you put yourself in that scenario, the more you have to go, ooh, what's next? And you have to think about it, the quicker you become. So you kind of feel like it, you make these characters and then you know like, oh, what, what would they do next? And that's a fun process. Since she decided to be on the stage and make people laugh, she has discovered the key of being secretly funny. The basic thing to make people laugh is actually not to be funny. Um, you, you go into an improv scene not trying to be funny. You go in trying to tell the truth of the characters in the scene and then that puts you in these crazy situations and people respond better to the, the truth in the scene. The stage gave her not only an escape from the real world, but also helps her navigate through her college life. It also helps me kind of like cope from day to day. It's like, ah, I get on stage and make up stuff. 
you know, in front of people all the time. So, you know, talking in front of a class isn't anything if you think about it. So it kind of gave me a boost of confidence that I didn't think I'd have. So that was nice. It was really cool. Jerez's little sisters are always her biggest supporters. We've been to every show, yes. They are particularly probably my biggest fans and harshest critics at the same time. So it's always a pleasure to have them come out. Aki Nagasaka, Viking Views. Trivia night took place in the R. Wilson Brown Room for MVC students. Valley students were allowed a team of six players. They were given six questions to answer in eight minutes. Different categories of trivia questions were given, such as movies, sports, and celebrities. To stay updated on campus activities, check your mobile email Answer. from Student Viking Events Coordinator Viking. Emily Fenewal. <laughs> That's Viking Views for this week. Thanks for watching. I'm Catherine Flores.